Good morning. Uh, I will present uh, our treatment uh, based on RNA interference for solid tumors. We are uh, focusing specifically on pancreatic cancer. We are phase two. This is our pipeline. We are doing soon phase two in with our treatment called loader uh, with chemotherapy. And next will be phase 2A with the same technology, the same drug with immuno-oncology drug. And in preclinical, we have uh, two programs in, punk, in prostate cancer and glioblastoma. So we have a target bank uh, that uh, are patented. And we also develop a next generation loader, which is a local delivery implant. So we do believe in the combination, drug delivery and treatment all together. And the using of RNA interference enables us to target KRAS, which is a very strong oncogene, appears in most, if not all, pancreatic cancer patients, but also in colon cancer, lung cancer. Uh, and when you downregulate KRAS, you do downregulate the activity of many pathways. One of them are well known, uh, like uh, the RAF inhibitor, the AKT, the reprimising less known are. Uh, network of uh, targets that are, is associated with epithelial to and chemical transition. So in fact, once you downregulate KRAS, you, you do affect many other targets. Second mission of us is to uh, target the impermeability of tumor, discussed here a lot, and uh, the challenge is associated with stroma that has been uh, described, but also the kind of the immune privilege nation of tumors and very hardly in pancreatic cancer, very rare T cells, very rare uh, natural killers, and the physiology uh, put very strong uh, limitation of the diffusion inward, even EPR works, the, the, the diffusion or the convection of nanoparticle inward is very ineffective. So what we believe is that uh, delivering the drug within the tumor would be much more successful. We developed a, a polymer matrix called Loader Local Drug Eluter, which contains sRNA against KRAS. And we use a fairly standard endoscopic ultrasound procedure that usually is used for um, biopsy. So the size of this loader is just the size of the very distal part, the tip of the needle, and we implant uh, eight of them at once every three months. Now take a sh deeper look, this is the way it looks in human. You can appreciate a large tumor, and this is a needle, as being seen by the ultrasound of the same device. And if you watch the surface of the, the loader, this is the in vivo, two months uh, in mice, and you can see the hair of the mice, but the point is that the surface of the loader remain clear. There is no protein coverage, so the drugs that will be released indeed will be released away from the tumor. And you can appreciate the hole that actually not created on the surface. Even after two months, the holes are very small. This is extremely important because it will block RNA to penetrate in. So on one hand, we managed to release three months RNA. On the other hand, we managed to preserve the RNA uh, three months with no any degradation and you can appreciate here that by playing with the chemistry we also can change the release rate and this is how it looks in vitro and then in vivo so you can see here that we downregulate in vitro, in vitro by the level of typically 90 percent the message and the same level the protein level and as I promised we also uh, uh, affected the phospho phosphorylation of downstream protein like AKT and phosphor erg, and if you watch what happens uh, in, in vivo, at the first day nothing happened, but after four days most of the, the tumor is affected, and after one week uh, the entire tumor is affected because of the slow diffusion. Important is that the loader and the drug that is released creates better condition uh, to later drug to be released. So we analyze uh, one millimeter, one millimeter, one millimeter every few days, a new group of uh, mice, and we noted that uh, the drug is on the first day just penetrates slowly. This is the amount of drug on the first millimeter, second millimeter, third, four, five. 
and typically these tumors are one centimeter when you need to sacrifice, and you can appreciate that indeed there is kind of developing of better condition, and after one week, practically nothing been changed if you watch uh, one month later, so the loader uh, enable better release later uh, at later phases. And this, this is, was a PK slide, this is a PD slide. If you watch what happened as far as message reduction on the first two days, there is strong reduction of the mRNA, but only a very near to the loader. But if you watch after one week, 98% in this case, specific case, been reduction all over the loader. And the same uh, picture if you watch the apoptotic uh, results. And we believe that it is associated with a high ammonia concentration uh, that enables better penetration of uh, siRNA into cells. It is only happened in the high concentration cases. And you can see here that in, in this in vitro, ammonia concentration uh, behaves better than standard lipofectamine. Uh, let me move forward. You can see here that uh, the gene expression is completely changed. The EMT-related gene are normalized back, for example, ecoderin, um, and the migratory tendency of cells is halted. You can see the scratch here, uh, three days compared to a non-treated. Non and you can see here what happens with mice that we took and we uh, grew tumors and then we plant them to new mice, naive mice, and then we sacrifice them one month later, and you can see that uh, none of the mice that have been treated by the loader develop macrometastasis. We simply sacrifice my mice and analyze the liver, the spleen, uh, the, um, the lung, and about 50% uh, of the non-treated or even two-thirds develop metastasis compared to the control. So it does affect also systemically new the creation or the propagation of new mice. Uh, let me show what we just uh, really showed to the FDA when we applied to the uh, uh, IND for phase two. So this is, uh, we do our CAGMP production in-house, so you can appreciate here three batches, each batch contains 400 loaders, and the separation between uh, one batch 70 days after releasing is about 1%, and also between batches uh, is 1% 70 days after, after drug release. So this is a very stable production that we managed to develop. And this is part of the talks, we did seven talks studies, as uh, no adverse effect, so no, no adverse uh, level was 24 times higher compared to the human. We only shed 2.8 milligram per three months. Uh, so it was very highly um, toxic and still we didn't see a toxic, uh, toxic level as expected. We didn't see any uh, tox toxic effect, sorry. You can appreciate here that there is no focal reaction, only one cell layer that, uh, around the loader. And this in this peak, um, you can appreciate that there is nothing practically different between the treated and the non-treated um, group in pigs. Uh, in human, we noted that the huge tumor being shrunk and become highly necrotic. And when you measure the longest diameter compared to the uh, la latest phase, you see that uh, all our patients show either stable or response. And none of the patients show tumor growth. And volumetric, it, it was even more um, dramatic. And, and this is, by the way, based on a single treatment. We did not repeat in phase one. And also the durability of the response was ob obtained. Uh, the ones that show response after two months also show response or even stronger response after four months. Uh, the life, the survival being extended compared to um, historical data. And you can see that the first patient to die was after 7.5 months. And this is our phase two that we are about to do. It is... Uh, double arm, our loader plus chemotherapy compared to uh, chemotherapy alone. Let me elaborate on the next step, 
that's going to be immune oncology with our drug. And we noted that the, the vicinity is very scarce as far as T cell. And we showed that the Loder may make the tissue much more voidy, typically 10% more voidy because of the stream, continuous stream of the drug. So we believe that the, the and, and also the Loder generates cytokine level all over the loader, again, this is one millimeter, two, three, four, five millimeter away from the loader, and it is fully of interferon beta, for example. And when we measure the, the chemo attraction, we do see uh, that there are strong chemo attractions that is generated based on this effect. So we believe that the, the loader can shift the, the, the poor narrow antigen. Uh, vicinity of pancreas to, to high neoantigen vicinity to high, uh, what would, would they say, hot um, uh, tumor. And we are looking to collaborate with one of these uh, provider of PD, PD-1, PD-L1 drug. Uh, this is a design of the phase 2A. And as you can see, loader is actually three triple mode. And uh, object, it does halt the tumor, it does impede metastasis or new metastasis, and it does encourage immunotherapy. And this is my last slide. We're looking for collaboration either on the preclinical or on the clinical phase 2A and phase 2 that we are running soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is open for questions. Uh, that uh, checkpoint in inhibitors of PD-1, for instance, uh, didn't help very much in uh, pancreatic cancer, um, that they will become useful uh, in combination with your system if you switch down key rays, that uh, checkpoint inhibitors as additional therapy will become useful? Yes, I believe yes. And uh, this is different combination compared to many other combinations running today with PD-1, PD-L1. And the main difference is that we uh, enable the tumor itself to, me, to be much more preemable. There are no T cells, so nothing to block. Once you enable the penetration of T cells, then the blockage mechanism would be work uh, much more better. And of course, the, the, fa the fact that you also raise locally the cytokine level would help as well. So, um, I have a question. Um, you said you were going to do trials, a uh, uh, randomized trial using uh, gemcitabine and paclitaxel. Um, is that, uh, I wasn't clear, is that in the metastatic setting or is that in the primary? Uh, setting? That's locally advanced. Locally At advanced. the moment, we are only focusing on locally advanced pancreatic cancer. Non resectable but non metastatic, which okay. is 30% of the, of the population. Okay, and that trial is already started or? It is about to start okay. in the coming months. Right. <laughs> Questions? Uh, I have one follow-up question. So, so you mentioned something about the stroma and um, that I think in your words that the tumor becomes more void. Um, uh, it's interesting, we saw that when treating with Abraxane or Napaclitaxel, that you lose some of the dense stroma uh, of the tumor. Uh, can you sort of uh, maybe make some comparison if you've seen that published data versus what you see um, in the case of this QS uh, downregulation? Mm. Well, we, we didn't uh, measure and specifically the stroma burden like uh, what present here. We didn't measure, for example, the hyaluronin or the collagen, so I cannot. Only, th only thing that I can do is present the population of the cancer cell, which are reduced, and analyze the physiology, specifically the convection and diffusion uh, effectiveness too. So I'm kind of understanding that something happened, but not measuring the stroma factors themselves. One more question. Okay, I'll have one last quick question then. <laughs> uh, so, uh, in a disease where uh, clearly the, a lot of the deaths and survival is dictated by the metastatic setting in pancreatic cancer in particular, uh, 
Yeah, why do you think that in a locally advanced setting this would have an advantage? Well, we, as I said, focus on locally advanced where you do not see, not saying that there are not, but we don't see metastasis. So the claim is first on locally advanced. Maybe it will be propagated to what's called oligometastasis. You just see a few of them. Uh, maybe heavily burdened metastasis, it may be too late, it is local. So the claim currently is on local advanced. Okay, thank you very much.